Welcome to Musings Television, where your host, Fabian, invites you to bloom with a new perspective that will encourage, uplift, and inspire. Here he is with today's Musings. Hi, welcome to Musings of the Mind, tools to encourage, inspire, and uplift. On today's edition, we want to explore the topic of grief. I'm sure many of us in this period of the pandemic might have been touched by a loved one who has passed due to the pandemic and even beyond the, pan the pandemic. Uh, daily, we have deaths in our families of persons that we are familiar with who have passed and gone on from this world. How do we deal with the grief? In my own family recently, I lost my cousin, initially lost her father. And about two weeks later, she lost her mother. Devastating, truly devastating. For the entire family, it has been devastating. That is something that one can't predict, and it's not something that you can see coming either. It just appears like a thief in the night, literally. And it stings even more when it is unexpected, but it stings deeper when you have to face the loss of both parents in the space of two weeks. I cannot imagine what my cousin is going through along with her immediate household, wherein where her, her, both her mother and her father would have been a part of. Uh, it is, it has been, having been around the family. It, it, it has been, it has been really gut wrenching more so for those within the immediate family who would have seen or been seen your mom and your dad day in day out and suddenly within the space of two weeks you're without both of them and so is time truly the healer time is the master of much it has a way of relieving us of pressures that in their immediacy seems inescapable, but which in the long run leaves us amazed at how we got over. But in the face of death, can we truly say that it gets easier? with time, with the passing of time, the passage of time. How do you deal with grief? And in particular, grief that is multiplied. It's hard enough, no doubt, to deal with the loss of one parent, but to have to deal with the loss of two, of both parents, within this short space of two weeks. It is just unimaginable. And so I went to research about grief and coping with grief, and I came up on the site helpguide.org, which has an entry on how one copes with grief and loss and it has the five stages of grief it lists as denial this can't be happening to me and i can imagine that my cousin in the midst of last friday morning when we learned that she had to rush her mother to the hospital and subsequently that her mother was no more. I got the news while I was at home and I was shocked 
I couldn't believe. And I was to have gone to work, but I just dragged on something and I made my way to the hospital to, you know, to be with the family. Because I just couldn't imagine that this was happening really and truly. And I can just imagine how much more so in her case, the case of her husband, the case of her son, the case of the grandchildren who would have been home and waiting no doubt for something positive, not waiting and expecting to hear that grandma would be no more having just lost grandpa weeks earlier the denial was evident in my cousin for the entire day on friday she didn't speak to anyone she just was just there and then it says to me that the second stage might be anger you might wonder why is this happening who is to blame and oftentimes when things like these happen, we really start to question, why me? You know, why is this happening? As you try to rationalize and come to terms with it. You just, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's, it has been difficult. And they are still trying to come to terms the fact that hey this is what it is and then there might be bargaining as one of the five stages of legal grief make this not happen it says and i and in return i you might be trying to promise something but in the case of death what can you promise when the, your loved one has gone they have gone there is no coming back from that you might enter a stage of depression. I'm too sad to do anything. And the final stage it says here is acceptance. There comes a time, maybe, time, the healer, will allow you to accept the reality of what has occurred. Where you become at peace with what has happened. Recently, I, as I scroll through my Instagram feed, I came across a snippet of T.D. Jakes and he was speaking at the time to, to grief. And essentially, to paraphrase him, he basically said that in dealing with grief, there is really nothing that one can do or anybody can say that will either make it any easier or for you to come to terms with what has happened, what has transpired with death. But you just continue to each day put one foot before the other to carry on and one day when you essentially least expect it you will experience restoration where God who is the only person who can really remedy and offer comfort will restore you And I suppose in the family's case, no, and more so for my cousin, her husband, son, and the grandchildren, and her brothers, that ultimately, ultimately, time, in the fullness of time, they will be restored. That all of us who mourn the passing, the passing, of loved ones will be ultimately restored when we least expect it that we will continue to put one foot before the other even as we grieve 
until that day comes when our grief becomes less and we are able to essentially go on without the burden of the grief we would have experienced in losing those who are close to us. But in the process of grieving, we have to also, in as much as we can, surround ourselves with those loved ones around us who are able to offer us comfort and reassurance. And we also have to be keen on ensuring that our grief does not lead us into a state of depression where our grief does not lead us into neglecting taking care of ourselves because it, it can lead to, to that. Our grief can be so overwhelming that we really don't want to do anything. We might even lose our appetite. And if we know that if we don't eat to sustain our physical bodies, then we can encounter greater health issues by virtue of that. And so we have to, in the midst of our grief, be there for each other, ensure that we take care of our physical selves and to continue to persevere. And in times like these, I'm sure for those of us who are people of faith, we really can't, it might be difficult because the flesh, the flesh, the flesh really does not at times allow us to, in, 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 a, in a case like this where grief is concerned, allow us to be so concerned with that which is beyond what we can physically experience or what we are physically experiencing in the know, which is the, the, the debt, the grief that um, arise, arises as a result of losing our loved ones. But at the same time, we also, if we are people of faith and if you are a person of faith or some level of spirit, spirituality, then you also have to draw comfort from that higher power to strengthen you to bear the loss and to know that this is a part of the journey of life. It is indeed inescapable because it is essentially a part of life. And given life's unpredictability, you and I don't know when the sting of death might touch us in terms of our family. And so the best we can do is to grieve or grieve when it does happen, but in the midst of our grief, and our grieving, not lose hope, but be comforted by the lives or life that they would have lived and the memories that we would have created whilst they were still with us. And find the courage and the faith to carry on and be there for those around us. And so, time the healer, time is the master of much. It has a way of revealing us or relieving us of pressures that in their immediacy seems inescapable. 
but which in the long run leaves us amazed at how we got over. For you and I, may time be our healer and may it continue to leave us amazed at how we got over those grief, grief, and those challenging moments that in their immediacy we thought we could not escape. I trust that you would have found encouragement, inspiration, and upliftment as we mused today on Time the Healer. Until next time, continue to be safe as we continue to journey through the season of the pandemic and to look out for each other, in particular for those of us who have during this period suffered loss. There you have it, this week's musings. We hope you found it encouraging, inspiring, and uplifting. Let Fabian know your thoughts by leaving a comment on this video. Do spread the word and invite others to subscribe to Musings Television. Until next week, may your hearts remain ever joyful.